Do you feel like you have a grasp on compression after watching our recent string of videos, but feel like there's always a little bit more that you can do? I feel like one thing that people never grasp is that something can sound good, but still not be what you want. This causes a lot of issues with clients and mixers because you could show something to 10 people and they all think it sounds amazing, but the client isn't happy because it's not exactly the flavor they were looking for. And what's the simplest way to give something flavor? using compression. By the end of this video, you'll have an understanding of how stacking compression can be beneficial for your sound and the ways to use it to bring something new to your mixing style. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST and I'm always trying to push the envelope. Get it? Cause it's a video about compressors. Compressors are envelope shapers. They literally push the envelope. Always looking to try something new to make sure I don't get left behind. Getting stuck in our ways is a surefire way to let others pass us in skill level. And history proves that not being able to adapt is always a surefire way to lose the competitors. When's the last time that you went on a date and said, let's blockbuster and chill? Never. And who am I kidding? None of us have time to go on dates anyways. But yeah, when's the last time that you even bought a DVD or touched a red box? There's a red box that I need all of you to touch right now. Hit that subscribe button, notification bell, and give this video a like because that one was smooth. My transition game is still crazy. Back to the point. We never really want to get stuck in the mindset that we shouldn't try something different. First topic, using FET compressors and opto compressors in series on vocals. But we're going to do this one with a twist. This is something that people have done for a long time and it started out with two very famous hardware units, the 1176 and the LA-2A. The 1176 FET is a very dirty signal which gives an awesome grip by adding some distortion due to its circuit design. And the LA-2A opto is extremely smooth, has no attack and release, and will react way slower to the incoming signal. Completely different designs, but think about it. What if you want gritty sound from a FET, but you also want it to have a smooth sheen? Or if you want a smooth signal that doesn't sound overly compressed, but has the attitude of a FET compressor? It's a great way to get some new results out of the same tools that you most likely already have laying around. Just always remember this. Make sure that the second compressor you're using has a lower ratio than the one before it. We want the coloration from the second compressor. And for the first compressor, a higher ratio to help with peaks and a low threshold, so it's only working based off of the peaks. Let's do an example of this. Actually, Let's do examples where we flip the order. You are my lighter in the dark And I would never let you fall You are my lighter in the dark And I would never let you fall You are my lighter in the dark And I would never let you fall you are my lighter in the dark and I would never let you fall. Next up, VCA and FET compressors in series on drums. This is most notably used in parallel compression, but I realized something recently that I've started doing, which I'll get into in a second. If you wanna see an awesome video explaining what parallel compression is, I made a video with Bob Katz, the person that popularized parallel compression and many refer to as the forefather of it. Some people make videos about parallel compression. I make videos about parallel compression with the person who made parallel compression so you can compress while you compress. Not a weird flex for an audio channel. But back to what I'm doing these days. With parallel compression, I always love the snap and aggression of using a FET because it makes the shell stand out and be really punchy, but it caused an issue with my overhead sounding too aggressive. So what I did for a long time was only parallel compress with the shells, but it made them too upfront. So what I decided to do was split my drum parallel, send the shells to one and the cymbals to another, use FET compression on the shells to give it the aggressiveness and VCA compression on the cymbals. Then I would use something from the bus glue series to put on the entire drum bus. This gives you tons of versatility and the ability to control each thing separately. And I promise you're gonna have way less problems with your cymbals going overboard when you're using parallel compression. Moving along, using FET compressors and limiters in series on bass. Let's not forget that limiters are simply compressors. And this one just makes sense, especially with the knowledge that we have of splitting a bass into two signals. Now, why do we split a bass into two signals? Because it allows us to have clear note definition in the lows and subscribe if you haven't already. That was seamless. Transition game leveled up. 
But yeah, clear definition in the low end, which would be compromised if we were to use a dirty type of compression that we all know by now is FET style. So we find the crossover frequency, split the base and use a FET compressor on the top end to add some dirt, but use a limiter on the bottom to keep that bass note definition consistent throughout the entire song. Using compression for different reasons and knowing when you should be using it are extremely powerful tools. So let's go over this all again. Using FET compressors and opto compressors in series on vocals. Using FET compressors and limiters in series on bass. VCA and FET compressors in series on drums. There seems to be a theme here. FET compressors must be the key ingredient to flavor. No wonder why Chris Lord Algae has like eight of them in his rack. Well, I hope you guys understood the point of this video. Mixing isn't always about just solving problems. Sometimes it's about innovating, and there's nothing wrong with trying to push the envelope, literally. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time. And tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I am out of here with a very weird mic drop. <laughs> Except as engineers we know, I'd never really drop this thing, because that'd get really expensive, even if it's still literally a piece of shirt. Later.